and what an amazing start. Hopefully you'll hear me now, because uh, I didn't have my mic turned on, because I'm a fool. Uh, so, <laughs> so let's try that again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, guitar already have an on voice, yeah. Hey, guitar, yeah, yeah. It's because I didn't turn my mic on. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and hopefully it's coming through loud and clear, as boring as my voice is. So we've got, we're off to a strong start. Um, but there we go. So let's try again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Ross. I'm one of your friendly product specialists, and we're going to do another learning with line six. So we're going to have some fun this evening, and we're going to go through everyone's favorite pedal, the dirt box. Um, do do, and I'm going to turn my email off so it doesn't go bing. We're doing well tonight. There we go. Uh, do do do, and we're good. Everything seems to be working. Okay, cool. So, so very quickly, signal chain. Uh, we got my wonderful Yamaha Mike Stern Pacifica. Um, uh, we've got a hot rails on the bridge, and got the uh, Fat Cat, I believe this is called, in the neck. Um, so, kind of just a P90, and it's a wonderful guitar. We'll stick with this tonight, um, and I'm going to be using HX Stump. So how I've set this up, and I'll show you how I have set this up. There we go. Um, so you can see I've got two amps in there. We're kind of using this, I guess, as kind of a pedal platform thing. Um, so the cab is the favorite kind of setup, uh, the 212 Interstate. That's uh, the mic, the 87 condenser. And we've got two amps running at the moment, and they're back to front just because my OCD is kicking in and we'll get to the OCD. So we've got US Deluxe Norm, they are the settings, and we're going to switch to the Brit Plexi Bright. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, pedals respond differently to amps and gain structure, um, and kind of, so there's my clean sound. <laughs> Turn it up a little bit in the room because, you know, loud is good. So pretty clean. But then it, I've essentially made a two-channel amp, so we've got the US Deluxe Norm, and then we've got the Brick Plexi Bright, which is kind of crunchy. <laughs> show you those settings as well. There we go. So you'll see um, you'll see how things kind of respond differently now. Um, kind of the first rule of dirt boxes is the search will never be over. Because your ears change, your tastes change, you're always going to be searching for the perfect overdrive or distortion pedal. And the search is never going to end, unfortunately. So that's the bad news. The good news is um, Helix and HX products and PodGo, they all have an absolute ton of, um, of different dirt pedals in there. Um, and we're only going to touch on the HX ones. We'll kind of, if this time, we'll maybe have a look at some of the legacy ones. But there's some killer ones in there. We're not going to touch fuzz. This is purely kind of boosts and dirts. Um, and we're going to just kind of deep dive a little bit. I did a super deep dive on the Air Apparent a little while ago. So go back and check that out. We won't focus too much on that one. But we'll kind of show some of them. There was a comment uh, that I saw earlier on Facebook um, about our model of the DS1. So we'll get into that. And you'll see kind of how I dial them in and, how, like I say, how they respond to different amps. Uh, and different gain structures. Some work great as a boost, some work great as a standalone uh, drive pedal. And then we'll talk about kind of stacking, um, actually using uh, a dirt pedal essentially as a second channel of the amp. So we'll get rid of the, uh, the dirty amp and we'll just use the Deluxe Norm uh, as a clean kind of pedal platform. And we use a dirt box essentially as a second channel. And I do that a lot and then we'll stack different drives into there to get kind of either different flavors or heavier tones. So uh, let's keep uh, the comments, and I'll keep looking at the screen, and it's really awkward, but there we go. Right, so let's get into this. Um, so where do you start by choosing a, a drive pedal? Well, some of you will be pedal geeks, and you'll kind of just know your go-to stuff. 
like I said, there's an absolute ton of different drive pedals in uh, in Helix and Podgo, and kind of a good place to start is what you know. If you've got an old kind of Boss SD1, you know, start there, or more boutique stuff. Kind of, I say this all of the time. Start with what you know. Um, this works, by the way, straight into your regular amp. Uh, if you're using HX effects just as a as an effects unit, and you're going into the front of the amp, perfect. It will work too, just for convenience sake. And I couldn't find some cables. Um, I'm using HX stump. So there we go. Right. Enough babbling. Uh, how do I swap screens? I do it like that. There we go. Right. So let's start from the top and I'll try and keep an eye on the comments. So we'll start with the clean amp. So pretty clean. Um, and it sounds it sounds good. You know, normally as a pedal platform uh, kind of amp, you would have it fairly neutral and boring sounded, but that sounds great on its own. <laughs> Just really nice, sweet, uh, sweet, sweet, clean tone. So I'm going to start at the top. Here's the list of tons of stuff. Um, I'm going to close that. You'll see. By the way, that uh, you can't see that, so don't worry about it. Right. Um, so HX Stumpy is going into my main Helix rack, which is my interface. Uh, there's a little bit of reverb on there, and I do have accessible some delay and some chorus, which I will show you later. Uh, the reasons for that, but yeah, so uh, Kinky Boost. So, straight out of the box, box stock settings, um, it kind of sounds like that. So, clean, click on the uh, Kinky Boost. I'm probably going to be playing a lot in A, I don't know why. Um, Du, 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 du. There we go. Straight in. Sheldon, why is the DS1 cop so horrible? Seems to have a compressor attached. Keep watching. We'll get to that. Um, there's there's tricks and things. Um, yes, I agree. But you'll see, hopefully, what I do with it. Uh, but yeah, please keep watching. So, Kinky Boost. It's literally... Uh, so this is kind of a copy of the Exotic EP Booster. Uh, model of the Exotic EP, EP Booster, sorry. Um, and that's essentially the preamp from an Echoplex. So tons of people use that pedal. I've got one sat over on the amp back there. Um, and it's a killer pedal. And you can do a bunch of different stuff with it. So with the drive down, it just sort of thickens things up ever so slightly. Um, so if you've got a single coil, which this is a humbucker, but you'll hopefully get the idea. It just gives it a little bit of beef. So that's with it off, with it on. kind of thickens things out. You've got two settings on here. The bright just kind of makes it a bit more spanky. And then the boost function. So these are uh, on the actual pedal. These are kind of internal dip switches, which are a pain to get to, set and forget. Uh, the great thing about this is obviously you got instant access to them. You don't have to get your screwdriver out. Um, and obviously this is tweakable through snapshots. If you're not sure about snapshots, we've done a few different things on that. Go and check those out. So now uh, with Boost. It's a really good boost and it goes loud, man. I mean, so clean. really kind of punishing the front of the amp and that's basically it now how that differs uh, from uh, clean to a dirty amp uh, and again with a dirty amp it's not gonna 
uh, make it louder, it's just going to push the front end and make it more filthy. So it will add volume to a cleaner amp, uh, naturally. But on a dirty amp, it's just going to push that front end and make it dirtier. So. And turn the level of view up a little bit. There we go. Just for giggles, we'll put the boost and the bright on. So pretty cool right there. Now, uh, with the kick boost, there's a really nice little trick that I like to do. So we're going to turn those off, excuse me, and bring this back a little bit. And we're gonna crank the drive on this. So uh, let's check the comments. Uh, Patch just sounds so amazing. Uh, when can I try a uh, same on my own helix if it does the sound of the clips? Ah. Um, Simon, I can't answer that, but thank you very, very, very much. Um, if you're wondering what I'm kind of hearing through, I'm just a pair of Yamaha HS7s, pretty standard monitors. Um, I do have it loud, so, you know, gu guitars are loud. What can I say? Um, thank you very much. Right, so, little trick. So we've got a dirty sound. Now, if I put that kinky boost on there... ...really kind of thickens things up. But if I move it after the amp, but before the cabinet, oh, this is cool. It's kind of instant Eric Johnson, really. I'm going to bring that back a little bit more. So before. Just a little kind of fun trick I like to do. We'll move on. Uh, right, clean. So try that. Um, kinky boost uh, after the amp but before the cab. And yeah, sounds killer. Loads of fun. Uh, kinky boost is a really nice kind of volume boost as well for solos. Um, the bright on it just kind of thickens things up and obviously gets louder. -er. So, um, Deranged Master, ha, this is a fun one. Um, so this is, uh, again, a model of a Dallas Arbiter Range Master. So a treble booster, basically. Now, why would you want more treble? Um, uh, it can get shrill and horrible. Now, it doesn't actually sound too bad with this at the moment. But uh, let's go to the dirty amp and pull that back a little bit and fatten this up. Uh, oop. So if you got an old vintage kind of non-master volume amp and you really cranked it, that's the kind of thing you're going to get. It's going to get a little bit woolly. Uh, put the trouble booster on. really kind of like uh, turns up the low end kind of gives you a bit more kind of cut on the high end <laughs> and you've got controls on this whereas the range master you kind of don't really so we'll, we will just bring that back a little here <laughs> Cleans up great. Now, an 
I've kind of done the Brian May thing before, but get a sixpence, put some chorus on. I don't have kind of a Class A style amp, but it, it's that kind of sound. You get the idea. Now that with a clean amp. Kind of a little bit too bitey for me, but um, you know, you can bring the treble back. Just use it as a regular booster. That's pretty cool. Um, so we're going to rattle through some of these uh, hottest licks in the UK. I don't know about that, Tony, but uh, tell very much. Uh, right, Minotaur. Ah, yes, the uh, the fabled, very, very expensive, um, I mean, boost. It's a killer overdrive pedal. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the venerable uh, Klon Centaur, crazy expensive. Um, and, you know, I, I may have had a few in my time, um, showing off now, but whatever. And the, they are really good pedals, but it kind of seems a little bit weird spending, what are they now, $5,000 um, to buy used just to get one um, for essentially a clean boost. And it's kind of weird, but there's, you know, there's stuff that the, the Minotaur does um, that is really, really cool. So... <laughs> So these are the stock settings. Now that doesn't personally work for me, so we'll go full gain. It's a great overdrive pedal. Uh, and you might recognize this kind of thing. So if we bring the gain right back, you'll see sort of around here. It's doing nothing. Uh, match the levels. So that's kind of what you would spend five grand for. I mean, why would you want to do that? Um, yeah, kind of your sound, but louder. And if we kind of push the level a little bit, yeah, it does kind of boost. That kind of thing. We'll stop right there. But you're going to hear where the juiciness starts to come in with this. So on the actual pedal, um, sort of around here, it starts to change. And you hear that's kind of got a little bit thicker now. But still not. Kind of tightening up that low end ever so slightly, but when you get above one, that's when the diodes start to kick in. Uh, if we go to 1.3. Right? Um... And I kind of generally like it around here. That's kind of where I like it set. Um, and it's just a really nice kind of low gain overdrive or that big kind of bigger overdrive 
uh, does that. <laughs> if you want it to. So you can get a ton of different sounds out of this um, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot cheaper than the uh, than the real one. But, you know, there we go. Uh, da -da. I mean, every preset, um, what point does it start to excite the diode? Uh, Paul says, what to, uh, what point does it start to excite the diode? Hopefully uh, you saw that kind of around 1 to 1 1.3. Um, that's where it starts to get interesting. Um, where do the chorus come from, Bradley says? Uh, don't see it in your chain external. Yes, Bradley. Um, sorry if anyone missed that. So just so I can do some of the things I want to do, I've got HX stump running the amps and the cab and the pedals. Um, that's going into my main helix, which is just giving me a touch of reverb or talent, as I call it. And then there's delay and chorus in there as well for something a little surprise later. Uh, Rami. Um, and so my favorite OD, have it in every preset. I've said that. Right, brilliant. Cool. There we go. Um, probably second chain hidden behind the settings of the window. Yeah, there you go. Um, right, cool. Okay, moving on. So, Tima. Tima? Tima. Um, so this is going for the, uh, the Timmy thing. And this kind of catches a few people out. So you see the controls, game, bass cut, uh, treble cut. Clipping and level, uh, and I forget uh, what clipping modes these are, but it's more of a feel thing than anything, um, and just experiment. So. so that's a lot spongier. And spongy is still and a little bit darker. So what you want to watch with this, and we're going to leave the gain and, and level uh, for a minute. Um, the bass cut and treble cut, like on the actual pedal that this is modeling, work backwards. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Um, if you roll off bass, that's actually increasing bass. So you'll hear that. <laughs> So essentially, if you think about it, this is the bass cut. Um, uh, with it down, you're not cutting any bass. So that's kind of as much bass as is in the natural circuit of the pedal. Um, and that's cutting loads out. So that'd be really good for kind of tightening up a boomy uh, or really thick amp. Same with the treble. It's going to get shrill. You get the idea. Um, now, this is kind of uh, one of the pedals that I love to use as kind of a secondary amp channel. Um, so if I bring the gain down a little bit and add a little bit of bass and a little bit of treble, boost the gain ever so slightly. So this is kind of, for me, clean amp. <laughs> need that much level. Just really kind of nice, um, gives almost kind of a British sort of plexiest thing. Um, and into a dirty amp. Just really kind of saturates it, and there is ton, a ton of gain in there if you want. So on the clean, so you can really turn that kind of crunchy amp into a fire-breathing beast. enough sauce let's go away um so that's kind of the tema uh excellent playing so thank you uh it's also why the team is great for bass overdrives yes absolutely uh bass knob equals low cut filter yes it does 
Uh, right. So, yeah. Timmy, Timar, whatever. Killer, killer kind of low to, to mid-gain pedal. Air Apparent, like I said, we won't spend too much time on this um, because I did a, a, a full session on this, so go and check that out. But for anyone that did not see that, this is where I like it. Um... <laughs> So kind of just great um, uh, kind of British thing. And it does a bunch of different things, something I've started experimenting with recently, bring the tone down and the presence up. And the gain down slightly, and level up. So loads of fun, um, and it'll go all the way up to this. On the distortion mode, you will need a lot more level um, and less of that. <laughs> Plenty of gain in there if you want it. Tone Sovereign, um, this is essentially two of the air apparent, or it's the other way around. So. Uh, it's a model of a Analog Man King of Tone, one of my all-time absolute favorite pedals. The Prince of Tone, um, half of it is what uh, we model for the Air Apparent. And it is essentially two of these, so uh, you can stack one into the other, uh, choose each mode, and it's just a whole lot of fun, and you get a ton of different sounds. Um, so you need to go and play with that, basically. Uh, Alpaca Rouge. Um, da -da, da -da. Yeah, we're going to get to the OCD. So the Alpaca Rouge. So again, th th this is the kind of thing that I say to everyone where I personally do not like what the stock settings are on this because it just doesn't work for me. So here's your clean amp. And here's the pedal. And it's not a bad sound for certain things. It's just not to my taste. So um, so if you don't like the stock settings, don't worry about ignoring them, uh, just tweak. So the high cut, uh, we're gonna take that all the way up, I'm gonna take the drive all the way down, and this is now kind of a little boost pedal. So this is modeled on the way huge uh, red llama. Ooh, we need a less level. So again, just a really nice kind of thickener, um, uh, a, a big boost basically. With more drive. So a load of fun uh, with a dirty amp. If we go back to where we started. Uh, did I bring that gain down? Not enough. Presence up, there we go. That's how I like a Brit Proxy Blight. Forgot how to speak then. Right, back to the pedal. Just make an amp absolutely explode. To the high cut down. Just real kind of nice and beefy. Uh, somewhere around there. Just real kind of big and thick and juicy. We drive all the way up. Just fun. So mess around with that. There's a, again, there's a ton of different sounds in all of these, but uh, Alpaca Rouge might be one that you overlook. 
Uh, please don't. Compulsive drive. Uh, let's go to clean. Right, so... <clears throat> Again, stock settings, not my personal uh, favourite uh, cleaner. And pedal. So what I will generally do with this, I'll crank the level a little bit, I'll bring the gain down. Um, and you've got a couple of different switches on here, the peak type uh, and the version. Now, there's a ton of different versions of this pedal. Uh, V2 is brighter, V4 is darker. So you might want V2 for a, um, a higher gain amp. Because V4 might be too dark. Yeah, it kind of gets a little bit muffled. And then the peak. Just kind of releases the choke a little bit, uh, if you will. Um, but yeah, sounds great. So, clean. <laughs> You'll notice kind of a theme, what I like to do, I'll bring the gain down quite a bit normally. Um, this is kind of a, a Marshall in a box kind of pedal. And it, it does kind of do that thing. Uh, I prefer the air apparent, <clears throat> but this is cool for higher gain stuff. And it cleans up all right. Compulsive drive. Dyna drive. Um, so this is uh, for the super boutique heads. This is basically turning your amp into a dumbbell, or well, that's the idea. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, just going back to the comments. I needed this video to say cheers, Rob. Um, yeah, drive paddles are fun. Uh, almost three year Helix user installing the new stuff. Yeah, man. Um, I'm, I've learned some new stuff today as well. Uh, because fun, it's just a good giggle. Uh, Plexi goes best all round amp platform for drive pedals. Um, uh, Paul, I don't know uh, that um, amp platform. So my normal go-to amp would be the Cali Texas Channel One, just because that's kind of I've got one back there, and that would be my kind of real amp uh, of choice if I was going to use an amp, uh, because I know how well that takes pedals. Uh, I'm using the Lux um, Norm on this just because I fancied it more than anything. Um, and it's probably more a common amp. Uh, but yeah, Plexi is a great pedal platform if you clean it up. Um, th there's a lot of kind of different amp models that take pedals differently. Um, and hopefully kind of you've, you've seen that. So you can dial any pedal into any amp. Um, but you will have to dial it in differently. So just be aware of that. Uh, uh, to do, uh, Raphael says, no matter what I do, I never get sounds like that. Um, uh, I am hitting the guitar really hard and playing quite loudly. So turn it up and maybe uh, four versions. I think uh, AZDH, I, I don't know your name. You pop up every week. Welcome again, uh, but I don't know your name. Um, let me just go because it's like, oh, Paul, sorry, I've got to put that up. Maybe it's good because of, because of its flexibility. I, I don't know how I feel about that. It's okay. And uh, Nick says, I'm doing a mighty fine job with this video. Thank you very much. I'm just having a little bit of fun. Uh, yeah, four versions of that, of the compulsive drive. Um, it's like seven or something. It's crazy. Um, or eight or whatever we're up to now. Uh, but there won't be any more. And that's another story. So, down to drive. So this is, let's turn uh, my amp that sounds like that into a dumbbell. Again, stock settings for this particular amp. This might work for something else, but for this amp, the way I've got it set, this doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, 
so what I'm going to do, I'm going to crank the level a little bit and bring the gain down and turn up and voice up a little bit and that sounds like that. <laughs> So that's kind of the more dumbly thing that I think in my head. If we're currently gaining, it gets kind of almost a little bit fuzzy. Uh, that voice all the way up, it's kind of basically shaving off how, men, how much low end is coming through. It's a kind of a bass cop. Um, if we take the gain down the level up with that, crank that, crank that, you get that kind of sound. It's a real kind of nice alternative. So these are kind of bright, bright spanky clean. That's kind of a good bit of bit of fun with the gain all the way up. Uh, and we need less of that and less of that. Uh, and a little bit more of that. It's okay. Um, but kind of sat around there, level depending on how your amp's set. And, and these somewhere around there. You're in a good territory. <laughs> Cleans up nice. That kind of thing. Uh, horizon Drive. Now this is kind of... This is good to work with a dirtier amp. Um which I won't mess around with particularly, but it's essentially kind of a, a green, tubes greenery style pedal, um, uh, but very much designed for the super high gain crowd. Um, you gotta get in there, we won't need that. Go away. So the attack, again, kind of basically, um, it, it, it changes the high end kind of peak, so. For this kind of thing, two is great. Let's bring that drive back, level up. Because we're driving the front end of the amp, we need that a little bit more. So that kind of works. Um, with the uh, flexi on, we'll crank that gain, you'll see what this does. Uh, got my stock settings. <laughs> So you'll see that's kind of a little bit mushy if I put the attack there. I don't need that much drive. I, I can't do all that stuff, but you get the idea. Uh, tons of level in there if you want it. <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, and tons of drive if you want it. Bring that back. It actually really kind of makes it sweet. Uh, if you do that. So there's your, there's your amp sound, there's the pedal sound, uh, it 
kind of crisps it up, but in a, in a really smooth way. It's it's a beautiful drive pedal um, and and a great kind of take on the tube screamer. Uh, so, valve driver again. This is a a, a really interesting pedal. Uh, so, Chandler tube driver, valve driven, tube driven um, uh, drive pedal. Very popular with Dave Gilmore and Eric Johnson. Uh, <laughs> And they don't sound like that. So generally, what you'll see uh, with this, the dry, uh, the, the the gain, it's a loud pedal as well. So, but we'll we'll leave this a little bit here. So you'll see that the drive and treble uh, generally on these is is way down. Really kind of hear it, it's definitely kind of another channel. Cleans up. You gotta be careful that drive because it uh, the bass, sorry, because it can get flubby. Yeah, it's flubbing out right there. So around there, travel around there. And then tons again if you want it. And the more drive you increase, the less bass you need. Oh, that's beautiful, kind of almost fuzzy, uh, but it's a great kind of just boost as well. And you know, see, so needs a little bit of drive. So you'll see kind of uh, Eric Johnson using it, um, something like this. So he'll actually go into kind of a dirty ish Marshall. <laughs> About that level of dirt, and then kick on the, the tube driver. Somewhere around there, maybe. Less of that. Kind of thing. Um, it's a really nice kind of boost for an already dirty amp. Uh, top Secret OD, this is one of uh, Ben Adrian's concoctions. Uh, do, do, do. What's your favorite game pedal in Helix and why is it? <laughs> Eric says, what's your favorite game pedal in Helix and why is it the Hedgehog D9? We're going to get to that and it is one of my favorites, but why well, choose one? Um, see, this is a great pedal in and of itself. So the top secret OD, um, so stock settings are like that. Um, so that works great for the plexi. But how I like this, again, gain down, level up. So one of um, a, a pedal that I love, this here, um, love pedal, Jula, we don't make. Um, and this is kind of, it does that thing, so. I went through a Josh Smith phase and kind of discovered that this works to, to kind of do that Jula thing. Uh, cleans up great. So it just kind of makes the low end bloom a little bit, a little bit of hair. Really, really cool uh, with a dirty amp. It kind of does almost the DS1 thing. 
uh, not the DS1, the um, Distortion Plus is the one I'm looking for, the MXR thing. <laughs> Gain. There we are. A little bit of less low end. There we go. Something like that. With all the level and all the drive, it's kind of, again, quite woo, fuzzy. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, yeah, loads of fun. Scream 808, uh, yeah, it, it does that thing. You do that, you do that. This to taste. Uh... Does that? Um, Hedgehog D9, interesting pedal. Um, the original <clears throat> is really fussy about what amp you put it into. So I don't like generally. I don't like drive pedals like that. I want to plug it into any amp and make it sound great. So there's a couple of things you can do with this. Um, big one for Scott Henderson, Mike Landau. Um, on its own, it's a really kind of sweet distortion pedal. <laughs> Except when it's set like that. like that sound um, I would say get some help it's just not kind of to, to my ears it's not particularly nice um, I mean on the dirty amp it works great but on a cleaner amp yeah, not so much. Uh, I realized I turned it up in the room and I might annoy my neighbors. I'm, I'm having fun. They can move. Um, so what I'll do with this, I'll bring the drive, because there's tons and tons of gain in this. Um, and for that kind of clean, fendery kind of uh, amp, I'll crank the level. I'll bring the tone back ever so slightly. And I've spilt juice everywhere. So essentially, I want it to boost the front end slightly. I don't want it too brittle. There we go. That's kind of almost that kind of vi-ish. I'm currently going up for one. And the knobs are interactive on this, so again, if you crank the gain, you're going to need a little bit more tone. But it cleans up so well. general kind of boost boost just absolutely killer killer distortion pedal and <clears throat> bear that in mind it's a distortion not an overdrive so on its own it's going to be a little bit grainy if you want it super smooth just turn that tone down and crank the level So that's the least amount of drive that it'll do. Um, 
but about there. <laughs> It does that kind of Landau thing really, really nice. Um, funny, because that's one of his main drive pedals. Um, Stu Parodi, um, again, kind of that greeny, or in this case, yellow, I think, I'm colorblind. <laughs> kind of turns up the low end. Um, it works a little bit different. Great for the kind of Zach Wild thing. Uh, turn that down, turn that up. Um, it's quite bright. So. <laughs> All game. Put the chorus on, obviously. Yeah, that's what that does. There we go. Um, right, this is what I know a few people have asked for. Um, so we've got the D's one vintage and the D's one mod. Uh, just get back to the comments. Uh, do 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 do. I'll watch this video from the beginning to try and copy some of the tones you showed here. I've been really struggling with the overdrum tones. Uh, mine also muddy, undefined. Uh, to me, I play through studio monitors. Also tried studio earphones, but it never gets close to what you've got here. Um, Raphael, again, I think I've said it a couple of times to different people. Just try as much as you can. Try turning it up because Fletcher Munson and stuff louder does help. Um, and mess around with that low and the high cut. If it's too muddy, then put some more highs back in. Um, naturally, check cables and stuff. You know all the boring bits. But yeah. Um, and we've got various things on YouTube um, offering dating sites. Sweet. Uh, Bradley says, chorus sounds fantastic. It does, and it is just stock um, uh, chorus. So if you're interested, just the stock chorus, you're good to go. Right. Um, if you're on YouTube, yeah, there's dating site adverts coming up. Perfect. Cool, right. So D's One Vintage, this is out of the box Awful sounding pedal. Terrible. Uh, sound like there's a clean. Here's the pedal. Now, I've got one of them here, and I thought, and I was playing through some of this stuff earlier, I thought. Oh no, that just doesn't sound good. That's how that pedal sounds. There's a couple of things you can do. So bring the drive down. Level up, do the boost thing. Now this is super responsive to guitar volume, right? Feel this one out. See, see, that's all right. Turn all the way down. Just muddy, but. Here's the trick with this. So you will see this pedal on the boards of kind of a ton of, you know, the 80s guys. Um, and it is essentially to boost an already driven amp. So we'll go to the plexi. And pull that on. Yeah. 
you see roll the volume down a little bit that's where it starts to kind of kick in now here's a couple of things <laughs> So there's without. Roll the volume down, it just kind of cleans it up and makes it nice and sweet sounding. And that's kind of, you know, the, the, the sat sort of rhythm sound. But if I put delay on, go to the neck pickup and turn it all the way up, it's that. So in context, on its own, terrible. Unless you like that kind of exploding thing, which actually that's kind of cool. In with a clean amp. Oh, whoopsie. trick pedal to dial in but for the dirty gobs of game but with that chorus that one up but you get the idea so it's very 80s it's very kind of saturated and compressed that's what it's going for so endeavor with it um do 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 these one mod um got the wazacraft version uh no it's the keely version uh try that join but loving the times brother thank you uh what is your amp um so for anyone that came in a little bit late the amps i'm using um clean amp is us deluxe norm sounds like that without that and then uh brick plexi bright sounds like that gain's gone up again there we go uh, so they're the two amps I'm using. So moving swiftly on, these one mods. So this is a little bit easier to dial in. Um, uh, so there's just stock settings of the these one vintage, or the these one mod. But same rule applies. Uh, roll that volume down. There's a lot more level in this one. And you got symmetric or asymmetric clipping. Kind of a little bit more palatable. There we go. Um, uh, the Ratatouille. So we've got two rats in here. Uh, Ratatouille and the Vermin. This is kind of another interesting one. I know we've gone on for ages. But we'll keep going for a minute. So again, out of the box, that sounds okay. What I will do with this is just kind of give it a little bit of that, a little bit of less of that, and crank that up. So the filter, this way is bright, that way is dark. Um, somewhere around here. <laughs> I generally try and get even kind of the heavy stuff. I try and make it sound like another channel of the amp. Yeah. There we go. So 
So that's going to be too severe with the plexi. <laughs> No, that sounds great. All the shred. So that's the kind of thing you would do. Um, turn that down, that up. This is the kind of Nuno Betancourt thing. The times the low end up a little bit gives it a little bit of more hair, but not much, um, and just lets you squeal. So there we go. <laughs> That's really nice on clay sound. <laughs> See, I'm discovering new things too. A uh, little bit more hair on that. No, round there. Yeah, cool. Vermin. A little bit more scratchy, a little more honky. Seem to remember this one. We kept it in because it was kind of cool, but um, this, uh, the original one we had, was broken. So... It sounds cool. Yeah, that sounds great. So that to me is that. Just brilliant. KWB, um, this is one of my favorites, but not as a, a, a booster and overdrive. Uh, I'll show you why we've got. There's another Ben Adrian. Um, if you don't know Ben Adrian, there's a ton of stuff on YouTube about him. Uh, he's one of the sound design team, and he is just a legend. Um, and he used to make pedals, and this is one of his, along with the Top Secret OD. And this is just a really nice kind of thing, so level up on this. It's kind of a dirty boost, bring the gain down. I personally like mess around with the push and pull diode, see your heart's content. I personally like the germanium one. <laughs> Just sound great. <laughs> Personally, so we'll go to the dirty amp. Beautiful. Crank the gain, it's a killer fuzz. having fun now yeah r that's my f probably my favorite fuzz in here um, great kind of overdrive in its own right but that fuzz Just fun, so much fun. Um, and 
last but not least, so, uh, oh no, two more. So we'll skip over the Legendary Drive. We'll just do Swedish Chainsaw real quick. Um, again, a bit like the Carnage D's one, um, awful pedal uh, to, to dial in. Oh, it doesn't actually sound that bad. Uh, what I found, we need level. Again, clean sound. You gotta kind of feel that treble out. I can't play anything metal, really, uh, to the bass end. So much gain. Terrible. Oh, even more terrible. Good lord. So the treble control is interesting. Yeah, you're gonna mess around with this one a lot. So that into a dirty amp. Yeah, I don't like that. Can't like them all. Um, right, legendary drive. Last but not least, we'll get some comments. So, on its own, it's a loud pedal. Like, really, really loud. It'll just smash the front of your amp. <laughs> So you want to bring that level down, bring it down, and probably bring the treble and presence down and the mids up. And it's a lot of gain. It, it does kind of do that thing. There you go, Steve. Um, now, little trick. Turn the amp off. Crank the level. We're going to need a lot of that. We're going to need a lot of that. We're going to need not a lot of that. Because this, this pedal is based on an act, it, it's a preamp. It's not just a pedal, it's a preamp. <laughs> Woohoo! There we go. So. <laughs> Like, just to that, straight into the cab. And it's awesome. Without. Uh, drive down. Beautiful. All the drive. So, there you go. Um, that's the trick with a legendary drive. You need the level all the way down. Um, uh, or just use it as a preamp on its own. There we go. Right, check some comments. Uh, it was, yeah, uh, gray skills, uh, well, the amps and cab models in use, uh, the aging rocker, so again, um, this is going to be available, by the way, anyone that missed it, uh, the amps in use are the Deluxe Norm, uh, set like that, and then the Brip Plexi Bright, set like that, and, uh, although I've changed that a little bit for effect, uh, 212 interstate uh, with the 87 condenser and everything else just stock basically so that's the amps I'm using uh, to do number of choices can be overwhelming but nice to have all the options yes I agree 
it is totally overwhelming so this is why i've said um and i did a live stream a, a wee while ago now but just keep it simple um you know feel free to audition something but get your sound first off right get just one preset that you're absolutely comfortable with that's the sound in your head um and keep it simple amp cab if that isn't sounding right change the mic okay um go back and check that live stream it makes such a difference um and you shouldn't need kind of super elaborate setups unless it's trying to do something specific um but yeah choosing drive pedals like the kind of the non-digital world it's a, a never-ending battle you're never going to find the perfect one because it doesn't exist because what's perfect today will not be perfect tomorrow um so i mean we've gone on for a long time i'll maybe do kind of um a, another one of these where we get into stacking or using uh, drive pedals as uh kind of channels of amps because that can be a lot of fun but yeah keep it simple mess around and just go with what you know that's kind of important uh what's the chorus and settings you're using please richard uh that is just the the if you go into the modulation section click on the chorus that's it i've not touched it so easy just the chorus so i think we are good with the comments boom done right that was a long one thank you so much for tuning in anyone that stuck around for the whole thing you gluttons you um like i say any if you come in late uh go back to the beginning there's some really cool stuff at the beginning if i do say so myself um but yeah fun with drive pedals so many different options um and you'll generally kind of find the ones that you like but don't be afraid to to move those slides or turn the knobs if you're not using hx edit um but yeah there's a lot of options within basically all of them so it's just kind of getting a feel for them i'm an absolute dweeb so i've messed around with a lot of these in kind of the real versions and uh, our digital models so kind of you get a feel for them at some point and also you know if you're after someone's sound find out what they use and go and check those out but uh but yeah there we go <laughs> yeah um it was really inspiring, Raphael. Thank you very, very much. Uh, and again, thank you anyone that tuned in. We've got another one, same time, at same place next week. Um, thank you so much. I'll try and keep an eye on the questions uh, over the next couple of days. So fire any more at me. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Take care. Cheers.